Hey everyone, um, I just wanted to do a quick little review of the um, videos that you've seen and but also just really concentrate on this idea of the elasticity coefficient which some of you guys are going to do for your homework assignment. Um, so just to quickly review, um, elasticity can be figured out in a bunch of different ways. Some of them are just sort of basically eyeballing a product to determine whether it's elastic and the others are much more mathematical. So for example if something has many substitutes uh, like bicycles it's going to be elastic and if something has very few substitutes like insulin it's going to have it's going to be inelastic. If something is a luxury versus a necessity or expensive versus in relatively expensive versus relatively inexpensive they're they're going to probably be inelastic and elastic. Um, and then in one of the other videos, you saw what the total revenue test, which is if the price is going up and the total revenue is going down, then you know that something is elastic. Um, if the price goes up and the total revenue also goes up, so if they move in the same direction, then you know that that thing is inelastic. And that should make sense to you. If something is a necessity like insulin with no substitutes and they start raising the price, like we've seen with um, certain pharmaceutical drugs lately, then you know total revenue is going to go up, and that's inelastic because people are going to continue to buy it even as the price increases. But the one that I really want to focus on today is the fifth way that you can figure out whether something is elastic, and that's called the elasticity coefficient. So you need to know the definition first. If some, if the elasticity of demand, that's this thing right here that says ED. If that is greater than 1, then we say that it is elastic. And if that is less than 1, we say that it's inelastic. So, but you have to be able to figure this out. And even though we are not going to force you to do this on a test, it is good to know how they actually figure it out. So basically, it is the percentage change in quantity demand over the percentage change in price. So to give this to you a little more simply, um, it's a way of saying um, how strongly will people react, right? How much will they change their purchasing due to a change in price? So forget all these numbers. What if I just said that, um, that price of milk changed 20%, it increased 20%, right? But the change in quantity demand was only 5%. So only 5 less percent bought milk when you increase the price. What would that tell you? That would tell you that, that that elasticity of milk is very inelastic. People are not going to respond very much to a change in price, right? And so that would have been 5% uh, over 20%, which would have been 1 quarter or 0.25. And so we know if we come back to this definition, that is less than 1, and that would have told us that it is elastic, inelastic, excuse me, inelastic. So to take this a little bit further, what, you know, some of you guys might want to know how you figure out the not numerator. So to figure out the percentage change in quantity demand, you simply take the change in quantity demand over the original quantity demand, okay? Um, and to figure out the denominator, you do the change in price over the original price. So basically you should have this equation and you should write this down in your notes. But when you divide something by another something, you can actually, when you divide a fraction by a fraction, you can actually cross multiply. And so those, these two equations are exactly the same. It just depends how you want to do it, right? So we have a change in quantity demand over the original quantity demanded and we have the change in price, sorry, excuse me, the original price over the change in price, okay? So I'm going to go through one quick example, but it's just going to be verbal, so you might have to write it down. Um, here's, here's some five steps for figuring it out. Make sure you write down the formula that we just had. Don't use negative numbers. Fill in the original numbers first, and then you fill in the other numbers, and make sure you remember the answer, okay? So let's just take this example. What if, what is the elasticity coefficient of these widgets moving from $2 to $3? So 
So remember, $2 is the original number, right? And so 320 is the original quantity demand, and it's moving to 280. So if we go back to this equation, right here, and we fill in our numbers, okay? The change in quantity demanded on that situation was 40, because 320 minus 280 is 40. And the original quantity demand was 320. So 40 divided by 320 is 1 eighth. So you could put 1 eighth here. And then you multiplied by the original price, which was $2, and then it moved to $3. So the change in price was only 1. So it's 2 over 1. So here you have 1 um, eighth, right, times 2 over 1. And so what you get there is 2 over 8, or 1 quarter. And again, that is going to be inelastic. So if you were trying to do this, you would say that this, excuse me, this was in, inelastic um, coefficient, right? Now that should also make sense to you because we're, we are in the cheaper part of the demand curve, right? So it's relatively inexpensive, and that tends to be the inelastic portion of the demand curve. So I hope just those efficient uh, those coefficients help with your homework, but remember you will not be asked to do that equation on the assessment. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.